Hello and welcome to Sincerely Bhakti, episode two. And today I will be speaking about confidence and being in one's integrity. So if you'd like to know more about the challenge, you can read in the description box below, as well as the setting and background for this scripture that I'm reading from, the Bhagavad Gita, with commentary by Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. So let's get into it. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya The verse that I will be reading today is chapter 1, text 19. And here is the English. And again, the English is in the description box below. The blowing of these different conch shells became uproarious, vibrating both in the sky and on the earth. It shattered the hearts of the son of Dhritarashtra. So this scripture takes place on a battlefield and there are two opposing army armies and they're arrayed, facing each other. There is time taken to describe the sounds of the conch shells of both armies. So the conch shell of the opposing side or the Kauravas the non-virtuous side, the sounds of those conch shells is described as tumultuous like a lion or simhanadam. And when this sound is trumpeted for the side of the korvas or the non-virtuous side, it is described that this sound gives joy to Duryodhan, who is the chief of the, the korvas and the one who is pushing forth this battle. And it gives him joy, but there's no description of it actually affecting the other side, the Pandavas, or the virtuous side. But when the conch shells are described for the Pandavas, they're described as transcendental. And here, they're described as shattering the hearts of the sons of Dutrastra, this Hridayani Vyadarayat. So... It's actually shattering the hearts. That's the Sanskrit. So how is that so? We have one sound, right? We have one sound having different effects on different people. It's landing for people in different ways. So obviously the conch shells that are sounding on the Pandava side, the virtuous side, gives the Pandavas great confidence and joy while it shatters the hearts of the opposing side. And so it's, it's quite interesting because it's still one sound. And so it's, because it's landing differently, we can also look at what is the, the state of their hearts, right? Why would it shatter their hearts? And uh, one thing that I found interesting is that although this is a battlefield, we can also see that as the, the, there's an example, it also applies into our own hearts and our own lives. And so um, this example of the conch shell makes me think about being in integrity and actually having confidence in God and doing the right thing. Prabhupada actually describes in this purport that uh, although the hearts were shattering on the other side, the Pandavas were not, and this is due to their confidence in Lord Krishna, because Lord Krishna was on their side. And so Prabhupada goes on to say, one who takes shelter of the Supreme Lord has nothing to fear, even in the midst of the greatest calamity. And I was thinking, what would be an interesting analogy? Because it's one sound and it's having different effect on different people depending on their relationship with God and their relationship with their own sense of integrity. And I, I, it's kind of a gruesome uh, example, but I was thinking, okay, say somebody is going through a village and they're saying, making an announcement that, okay, anybody who has committed a murder by sundown tonight, that person will be executed. Justice will be served. So we could take maybe two kinds of people in this situation. If there was somebody who had committed murder in that village, it would strike great fear into their hearts, this proclamation. It would be a sentence of death. It would be a, a feeling of 
this is it, this is the end. And for somebody who had not committed murder and maybe they had been victimized or their family, this kind of proclamation would be a source of great joy, confidence, a sense of fearlessness. Um, I'm being protected, actually. So that one sound can affect different people because it's a matter of being in one's integrity. And sometimes we wonder, well, what is being in one's integrity? You know, I asked that question once to a mentor of mine. What is being in my integrity? And she replied, oh, that is a question you can live in your entire life. And so always living in this question, what is being in my integrity? And sometimes we're informed of that through scripture or through the guidance of elders or just a deep knowing, like our conscience is telling us this is the right thing, this is the wrong thing. And repeatedly making mis mistakes almost numbs us to what is the wrong choice in life but also repeatedly making decisions that are in alignment with my highest integrity and with God actually leads me to greater and greater freedom and fearlessness and liberation. And so even in the greatest calamity, as Prabhupada is saying here, even in the face of death or, um, or of injustice in the world, there's a sense that I am doing my best to be in my integrity, take shelter of God, and take shelter of the highest course of action, and thus there is nothing to fear. So those are my reflections on this verse, chapter one, uh, verse 19. And thank you for tuning in. I'll see you next time.